Well, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Let's get you caught up on tonight's biggest stories. Yeah, this is the evening news on ABC 13 in Northwest Houston. Police are trying to find a team of robbers who killed an armed car guard during a holdup. Investigators say three men robbed and shot that guard during a money transport near Antoine and Acorn in Northwest Houston, then took off with some cash. Officers found the getaway vehicle nearby. Police have not identified any suspects. Another big story tonight. The Houston Astros fired their assistant general manager, Brandy. Taubman. This comes after he was accused of making insensitive remarks towards female reporters during the team's ALCS celebration. The team announced today their investigation found his comments praising Roberto Osuna were in fact made in the direction of those women reporters. Osuna was suspended 75 games in 2018 after he was charged with domestic violence counts, which were later dropped. The club apologized to the reporters involved. We're also monitoring some changes in the weather. We could see rain tonight as a cold front begins moving through. Let's get over to meteorologist Rachel Bryars for the latest on the timeline here, Rachel. Yes, we have a cold front that's going to be rolling on in. We're going to see cooler temperatures and, yes, also some rainfall. So that front right now, it has pushed through Dallas, Waco, and Del Rio. You can see temperatures dipping down into the 40s and 50s behind this front. For us right now, we are still up into the 70s, but that cooler air along with that rainfall will be rolling in heading into the overnight hours as well as into tomorrow morning. So let's break down the timing here. Here's a closer look at your future track. You can see at 11 p.m., that's when we're expecting that front to start making its way through College Station. You can also see along that front looking at some showers and storms. So if you have anything that maybe you don't want to get rained on outdoors or that might get blown away pretty easily in 30 or 40 mile per hour winds, you may want to bring that inside before these showers and storms roll on in. Then it should make its way into parts of Harris County by around 3 a.m. and then should continue off to the east, moving through Galveston close to 6 a.m. and then it will continue off to the east from there. It should be out of our area by around 8 a.m. in the morning. Now behind that front. It's going to take a while for that drier air to push in. So we're still going to be looking at a cloudy day and also the potential for some scattered showers. So still keep that umbrella with you as we head into the afternoon hours of tomorrow and also tomorrow. Make sure that you grab a jacket or a sweater on your way out the door because temperatures are going to be much more cool than what we have been experiencing. Look at your temperature starting off the day tomorrow in the upper 50s, low 60s as we head into the afternoon. They pretty much stay the same, so it is going to be a cooler day, so make sure that you are prepared, but all in all, going to be really nice. Now, when it comes to severe weather, we do have a very small chance in our northwestern counties over towards College Station, Brenham, and Columbus, but most of us probably won't see any of that. A strong storm cannot be ruled out. If we do see a severe storm into our northwestern counties, it will most likely bring gusty wind and also possibly some small hail. Now, also with our tornado threat, it is on the very low end scale but it is something we will monitor and we will continue to watch this very closely overnight into the morning. But really the main thing with this rain is how much we are going to see. That's really going to be our main threat. We could be looking at some heavy rainfall and we could be looking at one to three inches of rain by the time we get done with this rainfall tomorrow. So localized flooding cannot be ruled out. So give yourself a little bit of extra time on the roadways tomorrow just in case you encounter that or in case you encounter the rainfall because you could be dealing with some visibility issues. So tomorrow morning, 90% chance of rain in the morning. Then as we head into the afternoon, that rain chance will start to go down. Really nice weekend Saturday and Sunday and then our next front comes through on Wednesday. All right, Rachel, thanks a lot. And we're also learning more about an A-Leaf ISD cafeteria worker who hit a Hastings High School student with her car. ABC 13's Maya Shea has more on the charge she's facing and the latest on the student's condition. Anthony Velasquez remains in critical condition tonight here at Memorial Hermann Southwest. His family members told me over the phone that they're grateful he doesn't have any broken bones, but they're concerned about his brain injuries and they are hoping he pulls through. At A. Leaf Hastings High School today, visibly more police presence for students crossing the street a day after Anthony Velasquez was hit as he was doing the same thing. Classmates of him wonder why it didn't happen sooner. I just think it's crazy that the now apparently the department is getting more pressure, I guess, because all of a sudden there's just like policemen out of nowhere. 
The woman who allegedly ran over Velasquez is cafeteria worker Shaneri Ihigwam. Now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, Ihigwam made her initial court appearance today, where prosecutors allege she drove so fast, Velasquez flew into the air when he was hit. He observed the juvenile go up into the air after impact. A Leaf ISD officials were reluctant to even say which school she works at. Was she a Hastings employee or no. was she an ELSIC employee? I cannot comment on that. How long has she worked for the school I, district? I don't have that, ma'am. If she has worked for the school district as a cafeteria employee, are they trained about traffic laws and how to obey them around the school district? I wouldn't know that. The district attorney's office say there is surveillance video that proves their case against a Higwam. She was driving well over the speed limit and much faster than all of the other traffic around that area. Uh, and, and that's not okay for anyone. Tonight, Velasquez remains in critical condition, and Higwam has a court appearance tomorrow. In Houston, Maya Shea, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. Well, Houston police say a tow truck driver managed to snap a photo of the two suspects before he was shot and killed. Here's the photo police say 48-year-old Augustine Martinez took. They say the men were in his truck uh, when they got into a verbal argumentation and two other men in an SUV at an apartment complex on West Little York in Houston. One of the men pulled a gun and fired into the truck, killing Martinez. Call police if you know anything about this case. Houston police need your help finding a man charged with murdering a mother and possibly using a chainsaw to dismember her body. We have a photo to show you. This is 47-year-old Eric Arsenault. He's charged with killing 29-year-old Maria Jimenez Rodriguez. She hasn't been seen since June of last year after she dropped her daughter off at the babysitters and then never made it to work. Court documents say Arsenault was seen on surveillance video buying a chainsaw and bags from Home Depot. School safety concerns after an HISD student is caught on campus with a BB gun. It happened at Travis Elementary School yesterday. ABC 13's Nick Natario is, has the latest response from school and parents. HISD says it is investigating after one of its elementary school students was found with a BB gun. It alerted parents about what happened, but for one of those parents, she says it wasn't quick enough. What happened outside Travis Elementary School was no playground prank for one parent. So many things could have gone wrong. And um, and then who's to say if it was a BB gun? What if it would have been a, a, an actual gun? On Monday, she says her child told her another student brought a BB gun to school. The parent, who asked not to be identified, says she contacted school leaders Monday night. The following morning, she went to Travis Elementary. It wasn't until 3 Tuesday afternoon when parents received this email. It's unsettling, you know. Um, so many things could have happened in between those couple of hours in, in the morning from when I, I, I informed them. The district sent ABC 13 a statement saying a BB gun was found in a student's backpack at Travis Elementary School and has been confiscated by HISD PD. No students were harmed. We take these situations very seriously as the safety of our students and staff is always our absolute top priority. With safety in mind, this parent says she isn't sure if her son will return to school after what happened at the playground. Parents need to educate their children more. We, we don't need to be putting BB guns in our kids' hands if we feel like they're not uh, mature enough. Nick Dottorio, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. We'll see closures in the overnight hours. First, we take you to 288 northbound and southbound. Two lanes closed in each direction at Southmore, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Also, nightly closures at the West Loop. The northbound and southbound ramp to US 59 northbound. The detour will take you the southbound way, and then you can U-turn. Live traffic data anytime for you at abc13.com. Alisa, thank you, and thank you for getting caught up with us on the evening news. Be sure to join us tonight at 10 on ABC 13. Good night.